Zoom and Facebook. I so appreciate it. I'd like to go ahead and start off um, with prayer as we do in unity. So if anyone, if everyone would just lower your gaze or close your eyes and just take a moment and get centered with that divinity inside of us. Mm. And here we are together to open our minds, to open our hearts, and to dive in, to explore the topic of acceptance. And as we do this together today, let us always remember the truth of who we are and that we are one, no matter if it is virtual or in person, that energy is in us, around us, and through us, and we are connected. And we are grateful for this truth, for this understanding, and for being in the presence and the power of God. And so it is, amen. My son will be graduating from college next Friday. And while this is a great and wonderful thing, there is a little bit of bittersweetness with it. He will be moving on with his life. He will be moving out of our house, getting a job, getting an apartment, and creating his own wonderful life. And so I found myself lately having a hard time accepting this because not only does it mean um, I won't see him as much, but it also means that my life is hitting yet another tier, another level. And my life is moving forward also. Is there anything that you've always kind of had a hard time accepting? I'm sure you have because it seems to be human nature that we, we resist sometimes what is. Acceptance just is. And today I wanna to talk to you about acceptance. I'm gonna define it. There are a couple of different definitions, but then I'd also like to give you three tools to help you get into acceptance. So one definition of acceptance comes from the dictionary, and that is the action of consenting to receive or undertake something offered. It also says the action or process of being received as adequate or suitable, typical to the, uh, typically to be admitted to the group. But if you look in psychology, they have slightly different definition. So this comes from the American Psychological Association. And it says a favorable attitude towards an idea, situation, person, or group. In the context of psychotherapy and counseling, it is the receptive non-judgmental attitude of therapists or counselors, which conveys an implicit respect and regard for their clients as individuals. Acceptance, I am in AA and acceptance was a word that I heard a lot in the beginning. I had a sponsor that I would call her and I would say, ah, you know, this person did this, this person did that. I'm just really not happy, you know, blah, blah, blah. I would go on with all my complaints. And when I was done, she would say, Brenda, acceptance just is. Acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. And I, I didn't like that answer. <laughs> I'm like, acceptance is not the answer to all my problems. <laughs> but as I grew and as the years went by, I learned that acceptance is the answer to all my problems. But getting there can be a challenge. How can you accept things that, that feel very harmful or feel very bad or negative? John Kubat-Zinn's uh, book, In Coming to Our Senses, 
healing outside of ourselves and the world through mindfulness writes this about acceptance. Acceptance doesn't by any stretch of the imagination mean passive resignation, quite the opposite. It takes a huge amount of fortitude and motivation to accept what is, especially when you don't like it. And then working wisely and effectively as best you can possibly can be as best you can possibly can with the circumstances you find yourself in and with the resources at the disposal, both inner and outer to mitigate, heal, redirect and change what can be changed. So the resources at your disposal in unity, we know that those resources are the God within that wisdom, that inner voice that deep, still inner voice that speaks to you. That's your resource. And I found many times when I wasn't accepting something, if I would just meditate and be still, I would hear the answer. I would hear a way to accept. Acceptance does not mean that you have to like something. It just means that you... You see it for what it is. It just is. <clears throat> There's a quote by Buddha that suffering is resistance to what is. How many times have we resisted what is? I know there's been a quite a few times. And when I'm resisting what is, then I am creating my own suffering. And that, in a way, is also our third principle in unity. Your thoughts create your reality. So it's within that surrender, that breathing into, okay, this is what is, that I'm able to get out of that resistance, to start changing my thoughts okay, this, this isn't so bad. Like with my son, it's a part of life. It's natural. I want to see him succeed. I want to see him grow. I don't always want him living in my house. <laughs> so the more I go on with my thoughts and I change them, the more acceptance that drops into my heart. I'd like to read to you from AA's big book. This is a very famous page and it's on acceptance. And it says, an acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place or thing or situation, some fact of my life unacceptable to me and I can find no serenity until I accept that person, place, thing, or situation as being exactly the way it is supposed to be at this moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing, happens in God's world by mistake. Until I could accept my alcoholism, I could not stay sober. Unless I accept life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to be concerned not so much with what needs to be changed in the world as on what needs to be changed in me and my attitudes. Acceptance just is. I'd like to go ahead now and give you some steps that I have learned, some tools to get me into acceptance. And the first one, first one is awareness. So being aware of that person, that situation, taking a really good step back and looking at it, maybe even looking at it through someone else's eyes. Being aware that helps me get into, well, what stories am I telling myself? 
What stories am I telling myself about this? I know one story about my son um, graduating is he'll never talk to me again. <laughs> and of course, that's a story because of course he's going to talk to me again. But if I get deep inside of that, and if I don't have that awareness that this is a story I'm telling myself, then I, I'll be suffering because again, I'm resisting. So awareness is one of the first steps. The second step is acceptance. So when I'm aware that I can drop in, like we talked about, and go to my heart and listen, go to meditation, go to prayer, and listen for that still voice that guides me. What do I need to know in this moment to help me with acceptance? What will help me shift my thinking? A lot of times for me, it's, of course, seeing the divinity and the other person, if it is about another person. I know that they are also a child of God. And I can see through all the situations or the problems that we're having that they are struggling just like me. And so that could help drop you in to acceptance. And when you have acceptance, then you can go to action. And action might be, you know, saying you're sorry. Action might be coming to a negotiation to compromise. Action might be doing nothing. Action might just be praying, supporting them in prayer. Action might just be saying, okay, I accept that I cannot accept this right now. And sometimes that happens. There might be things that you're just not ready to accept, and that's okay. Sometimes we need to give ourselves permission. I can accept that I can't accept. And go on from there. Acceptance just is. What I would invite for each of you is this following week is to look at something that maybe you can work around acceptance. See what you can do with that. See if there's one thing that you can try to accept. And if there's not, that's okay. You can accept that you can't accept. Just having that awareness, being in that moment, being in that space is wonderful. And it's a first step moving forward. So my son is graduating next Friday. And as I change my thoughts, I am so proud of him and so happy. And Actually, I think I'm ready for him to move out because now I'll be able to do something with that room. <laughs> I love and appreciate each and every one of you. Namaste. Thank you so much.